Hey, welcome back inside the mind of Matt. I got me some machinable wax. It's 3D printable wax. What am I gonna do with it? You're gonna have to watch the rest of this video. Stay tuned. So I've been trying to do some lost PLA casting in my last uh, casting video. If you didn't get a chance to see that, it's back here. I made a comment about requesting a sample and it was ignored. And I made it again after I made that video, the request that is, and this time it was heard. So the guys over at Machinable Wax sent me a sample roll and I'm going to load it up I'm going to play with a couple of the settings see if I can get it to print and we'll show you what's gonna happen let's go and look where they sent it right to inside the mind of mad that's me anyways let's see what's in the box Look at this, what's it say? I don't know. Oh, look at that, a sticker and all. Wow, that's so awesome. Got some packing peanuts. What's that? Now I asked for a sample and I guess this is a partial spool of free sample but that still seems like an awful lot which I'm super happy about. Thank you guys. I will leave a link in the description for where you guys can get this. A little, it is a little pricey but exotic filaments are a little bit. It does look a little screwy on that roll, but... Let's see what that... Pretty much melts. Boom, right away. Which should be pretty good for the melt-out process. We've got a little of my lighter there. And it, it, it smells like wax. Nice. Take a little sample off. You see it's very flexible. Looks like my tolerances are pretty good. Nice. So there is a, uh, a kind of a letter. I already got it all messy. But it does give uh, some print recommendations. So I am going to, uh, I think I'm going to load this up. I think my Titan extruder should handle this flexible type material pretty easy, so let's get it loaded up in mow and we'll get something cool printing and test this stuff out. So one of the first things that I've discovered first off is because of the low printing temperature of this particular filament, you're going to want to make sure that you do a really good purging 
on your actual throat and nozzle and all that. I've actually disassembled mine and I'm doing a little manual cleaning because it's about that time. So I'm going to get everything cleaned out of the nozzle really good so that this wax is going to flow through it nice and good without any other remnants of other filament blocking the path or anything. So I'm using a bread tie and it's just about right. Well, it might be a little too big actually. This is a resistor. I'm going to see if this works a little better. Oh yeah, 0.35. stop this because I am having some significant warping. It's pulled away from the bed. What you see is significant. Very rubbery. So my fan is so powerful, it's like blowing it right there. You see that little wisp? That's from my fan blowing. So I'm going to tweak my fan setting again and start this up again to see if we can get it to print a cube. I've been uh, playing with the settings here for a little while. As you see, I started out here and I could tell that it was pulling away from the bed pretty much immediately. Uh, one of the mistakes that I made is I didn't have a brim. I just had a skirt. I redid my settings and forgot to put the skirt on or forgot to put the brim on and it still pulled away and then I tried a brim and it was going slow and I had the cooling fan on for all three of these then I put a bigger brim turn the cooling fan off also the retention is off for all of these as well and I've got a successful print as of right now. Uh, it is cooling and it popped right off. It's just a cube. But we're gonna do something with this cube and see what's what this stuff is gonna do under a little fire. So I'm gonna get something printed here so I can possibly test out the height and See if this stuff is going to work as good as I'm hoping it's going to. So stay tuned. All right, so I've had some significant bed warping with this stuff and the build tech. So I've broken out my piece of glass. There, I got to make some readjustments and. I'm going to give it a, a shot on some glass. Also got some hairspray to check it out and see what's going to work next. So, stay tuned. Alright, so this 
for a straight glass, same temperature, 150 degrees. That was at 80, but with the glass. And I still got a little lack of bed adhesion. The finish is nice. Let's try a little hairspray. So this is with hairspray, and that, that was stuck pretty good. That might be the solution. So, let's try something bigger. So after a bunch of different attempts, uh, I've come up with a couple conclusions. I'm going to share them real quick and then we'll give the final results. So I printed a bunch of test cubes. The main thing was I wanted to check bed adhesion. You see the bottoms of these. These ones are printed on the build tack. Not that one. That might be a build tack. But the build tack because this has got like a greasy type of consistency and, and texture to it. And when it's printing, it's kind of kind of greasy. Uh, the build tech was not holding on to it. I ended up putting my piece of glass on and printed straight to the glass. And it still had a bed adhesion problem. And then I, this was prior to this was on the build tech actually I I tried to warm it up with a blowtorch while it was printing just to keep it from printing off the bed but it also led me to one of the other things is you, you definitely want to make sure that your infill is enough to support any top layers and you probably want to go with more than three layers I've actually bumped it up to four and I still think that that's not enough you're probably going to use a couple more layers on this, so it's not going to be a hollow um, situation, but it, it's going to melt faster, hopefully. This is another on the build tech. Another on the build tech, but I did have some success on the glass, and I had to break out the hairspray, and the final results. Oh, let's let's talk about the settings. At 150 degrees Celsius, my bed is at 90 degrees. I'm printing at 50 millimeters per second. Five top layers, three bottom layers, two walls, and 12 brims. My retention is turned off. My infill is set at 20%, but that could vary depending on model. My cooling fan is off for the first 10 layers and then on at 10%. I'm printing on glass with several layers of hairspray. Some of these you're going to have to play with, but uh, let's let's see what I ended up with. Okay, so one hour, 55 minutes. Now this is 80% uh, scale of what I've been printing. Hope that you can pick up some of this. There is some stringing, and that's probably due to the lack of uh, retraction. I'm thinking if I, I should be able to clean it up pretty good. 
but I, I got bed adhesion. I got it to stick. What I did is I sprayed a layer of hairspray. I let it dry, sprayed another one, and I think I got like four layers on there where I let it dry in between each one and then gave it another little spritz before I started to print. But I've got no warpage. As you see, it's, it's very flimsy, very kind of rubbery after it's been printed. But uh, I'm pretty happy and I'm hoping I've got a couple of new things that I'm working on as far as my casting of, or making the mold that is. So I won't be doing any melting right away but I am getting ready. So I'm going to have to get my razor on for this. So. Let's do that. So that's from machinablewax.com. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get some. Order yourself up a roll if you're looking to do some 3D printed casting. I'm going to be doing some more soon, so stay tuned. Don't forget, if you want to see them, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification because YouTube isn't letting all the subscribers know that we have videos out unless you've got a notification on. Make sure you hit that like button. Check out my affiliate links down in the description. Maybe step over to my Patreon, drop off a dollar. Keep coming back for more of Inside the Mind of Matt. Happy printing. Good luck casting.